So I found this interesting. I found this article back on the 15th. I kind of buzzed through it. And then I went back and read over it before I did the stream today. And I said, shit, I found something in this to be really, really interesting. So this is from Newsweek. It's a, and I'm not going to read the whole article because we're going to transition over into one of the legal documents here in a second. But it says uh, from Newsweek, Brian Koberger's eyes new way out of murder charges. And it goes on to say, Brian Koberger's legal team may have found a new way to attempt to have his murder charges thrown out following a court document filed this week. On Tuesday, Koberger's lawyer, Ann Taylor, who served as, I never get this, Kumu, Kutenai? Did I say it? Kutenai? Kootenai County Chief Public Defender called on the state to provide a full record of the grand jury proceedings following his indictment of four counts of first degree murder and one count of fel felony burglary. And just so I can clear up the felony burglary charge, because I always hear about this. Like, what did he steal? He didn't steal anything. <laughs> the burglary charge is there because, um, according to the evidence, that he was not supposed to be in or around that home that evening. When you go into a home that you're not supposed to be into, it's considered burglary to Idaho law. <laughs> so it says, quote, the release of the grand jury proceedings governed by rule and statute are materials necessary to Mr. Koberger's defense. The court document said, quote, a grand jury was impaneled at the time when a small community of Moscow, Idaho, had been exposed to six months of intense local, national, and international media coverage. And this is where it gets interesting. Quote, because the state has provided extensive discovery, Mr. Koberger knows that exculpatory, I said it, Laura. Very good. Evidence exists. Whether a fair and impartial panel of grand jurors was assembled amidst intense media coverage is significant question in defense must evaluate. I'm going to go back and read that again. Because the state has provided extensive discovery, Mr. Koberger knows that a spoken, I, God damn it, <laughs> exculpatory evidence exists. Laura, Laura. That's an illegal document. How would he know that exculpatory evidence exists? Well, I was thinking about it, and I said right to you before I went on air, if, if he was there, if he allegedly committed these murders, wouldn't he be the defense best witness? Wouldn't he know if law enforcement translated or misinterpreted information or evidence in this case? Maybe that's the exculpatory evidence. The, the fact that they wrote Mr. Koberger knows and not Mr. Koberger believes is telling, in my opinion, how does he know that exculpatory evidence exists in that extensive discover discovery unless he found something within it and through their search of the, the numerous amounts of, of data and documents given to them? How, how does he know unless something in there changes the game a little bit? It says it right here, and this is the document that we pulled. It's from, uh, it's the defense reply to status supplementary request to defense motion grand jury. Page, what was it, page three? Three, first full paragraph. A grand jury was impaneled at the time when the small community of Moscow, Idaho, had been exposed to six months of intense local, national, international media coverage because the state has provided extensive discovery Mr. Koberger knows that expulsory evidence exists. How does he know? I just don't know how he would know unless, unless something is in this discovery that is lessening the burden. Um, not necessarily saying 
he didn't do it, but also lessening the burden of him doing it. He has to be privy to something to know that there's exculpatory evidence existing in that discovery. Let me throw a possibility out there. Sure. I'll go there and I'll say it because we've talked about it. And it goes back to that initial statement that he made when he was arrested. Did you arrest anybody else? Was anyone else arrested? Was anybody else arrested? Laura, let me ask you, could there be maybe a possibility that someone or something could be involved? I mean, it's very evening? possible. No, 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 I no, mean, no, 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 look at <clears throat> it, it's a possibility. It's certainly a possibility. Um, I mean, exculpatory evidence isn't just evidence that exonerates the defendant of guilt. It's also evidence that is favorable to the defendant. So it doesn't have to necessarily exonerate the guilt, but it can just be favorable to a defendant. So how could there be information favorable to a defendant? Well, if let's let's say if if 30 people spray painted something and only one person gets caught, but yet they show a video with all 30, it, it would lessen the burden off of the, you know, off of that one person. So is, is it possible that there is someone else involved with this? So Harlot's saying these motions technically don't have to be a hundred percent factual though. They're not writing under oath. Judges even instruct the jury not to take defense or prosecution statements as evidence or fact. I don't know why they would be saying this, though, that he knows that exculpatory evidence exists. Why would they say that? I mean, it would be very plausible that they would put he believes that exculpatory evidence exists. I mean, this is this is a whole paragraph page about the discovery, including, ex, you know, the extent of discovery, including what appears to be exculpatory evidence. So I don't necessarily know if it's just uh, they're, they're going here. They're going here. Well, he knows something. He knows something. You got to know something that would allegedly put you in that place at that time or evening. Correct. Because. You wouldn't just know anything that went on if you weren't there, right? And yeah, we still haven't you? heard we still haven't heard anything about an alibi. In fact, aren't they asking to extend time to come up with an alibi? Yes, I believe that is because they need more time. To go through, they need more time to go through the discovery. So. I don't know. It's just very interesting. I would think that if someone knows, has to know something, they would have to be there. Yeah. I mean, if I'm able to pick holes through a document or through multiple documents, meaning discovery, then that's because I know it's not true. So Randy says the exculpatory evidence is the lack of evidence found in his car in his apartment. Exculpatory. That's what he thinks it is. I mean, I don't necessarily think that's exculpatory, but the lack of evidence, if they if there was no evidence found in his car and apartment, that would just be, it wouldn't be exculpatory because it's not, I mean, I guess it would work in his favor, but I don't necessarily know if it's exculpatory. It would just, it wouldn't exist. Like if, if there's Indigo, no, babe. Yep, go ahead. If there's no evidence that there was any type of DNA or anything in the car or the apartment, then that just is a, is nothing. Indigo babe says the defense is desperate. Oh, I believe. Well, it's funny. They're the ones that have been kind of sending all these motions in, um, you know, asking for more time extensions, 
So it's uh, it's interesting. Very, very interesting. But I, I, I found that Newsweek article, article and I said, geez, that's uh, something may, uh, maybe I overlooked, something that I didn't question. But, you know, if he knows, then what is the exculpatory evidence that he knows? It says he knows that it exists. I want to know what it is. DDHO says if he had an al alibi, he wouldn't need discovery. He would know his alibi. I Absolutely. believe so. Absolutely. Why have we heard no one, you know, like uh, one of our moderators was saying the other day, he's still sitting in jail. He's still there. If there was anything to exonerate him at this point, wouldn't he be out walking around? Wouldn't they found that in the discovery? Uh, yeah, I mean, if there was something in this that was that damning of exculpatory evidence, they would have to do the right thing and, and say, okay, we now know you didn't do it. Jeremy says it seems that the defense wants the prosecution to do their job for them. That's kind of how I felt. That's well, kind of how I felt. Um, this gets to be tricky with the amount of discovery. They they called it voluminous. I mean, we're looking at, at what is big data. It, it's so much for the defense to manage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe, you know, they're asking, hey, can you go back and, you know, say there's a thousand pages of a document. Like what page are you actually looking at as a page? Yeah, nine, or, nine, or or what, what part of this video are right. you specifically stating is, I mean, I get it. The discovery is everything, everything that the prosecution is using to come up with evidence, but it's hard. It's hard. So Randy says if they didn't find the DNA evidence in his car or his apartment, the knife sheath becomes very suspicious, as though it was planted. I think the Banfield cop needs to be investigated. I mean, if they don't find DNA, then then I don't think the sheath becomes suspicious. But I think a lot's going to come out, like uh, body cam footage. Uh, more DNA reports. I mean, there's so I mean, much. DNA, DNA evidence was presented in the OJ Simpson trial. Uh, massive yeah. amounts of it. And they didn't understand it at the time. They didn't understand it, but still, it was basically washed away. The thing that really put the nail on the coffin for that trial was when he tried on the glove. Yeah. And... Um... I mean, yeah, with O.J. Simpson. Samantha says, planted. Randy, it wasn't planted. He was dumb and left it behind. I don't necessarily know if he was dumb, but I believe that he um, was feeling Allegedly. a lot of well, adrenaline, yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. By the way, we're not legal experts. We're not law enforcement. We're just basing our opinions off legal documents. It's kind of what we do over here. We don't get into the conspiracy theories. We don't get into the, I uh, know everybody loves when I say it, the aliens, the aliens are coming. The aliens are coming. Um, we don't get into that, but I want to recognize this. Well, old member, new member. Reba has become a member again here. Thank you so much. Thanks for re up and Reba. Thank you. We appreciate it. If anybody wants to join, you can go down there and click the join button below to support the channel. My channel membership start at a buck ninety nine a month, less than a cup of coffee. Hey everybody, if you've made it this far in the video, I just wanted to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content today, please give it a thumbs up. Oh, also on the way out, hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. So every time I drop a new video, you guys will be informed. And somewhere up here while I'm talking, you're probably going to see another video pop up. Make sure to click on that video as well. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.